United with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors, serving throughout the Border Valley community, and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation by KSE Channel 38 Christian Television. And now, United with Christ. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to United with Christ. I'm Pastor Eric Hall back right here from the Sun City of El Paso, Texas, from the Rock Face Center right here in our local community. And I just want to thank you again this great morning for watching um, United with Christ and joining us here at KSE. And I just want to thank all the staff here as well for just their warm welcomes and everybody here in the studio and those that do their great job here to make this broadcast available to all of you who are out there watching this great morning. Again, I again want to give a great shout out to my church, local church, the Rock Face Center. I love you guys. I uh, always want to say continue to press and keep forward moving and that progressive mentality. And I just thank God for you and your love and support. This morning, I just want to just come before you this, this great day and just celebrate what God is doing uh, personally in our lives and in the lives of um, his people. And then when you look around and you see how good God is and how he's blessing all over the world and all around our community, it's a great thing to see. And I'm just excited about um, some of the future things that God has in store for um, all of us, you and me and um, our ministries, ministries around town and how God is just really just reaching out um, through people to lead people to Christ. But I believe that sometimes that there is a, a misconception about the blessings of God and how he blesses us and how he keeps us uh, in those moments. You know, I, I deal with a lot of times where people say, you know, I, I'm suffering, I'm going through and uh, where's God at? You know, I see people blessed and I wish I had what they had or I am lacking in a certain area of my life. But I'm here to let you know that part of the process of being a Christian and really being united to Christ to know this is to say, He'll never leave me or forsake me or to know that whatever you're going through, that he promises to be there and help you and provide a way to escape for you. And so it will not always be a flowery bed of ease. You will not always stroll down Blessed Boulevard. You, it always won't be howdy, howdy, and everybody's great and um, every, everything's going perfect in your life. There will be some times in which you will endure trials and tribulations. Just know that as a believer, because sometimes we miss that in the process of really becoming a strong and a Christian that able to endure through many things, because there will be trials and tribulations and hardships along your journey. I was even talking about this past week about that transition when you're giving your heart to Christ and um, really trying to follow him and how sometimes things seem to be like man it's hard it's difficult and and, and, and sometimes that's the that's the reason why people don't stay long or they don't continue to um, follow Christ because that 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 life gets a little difficult at times and I can remember Abraham when he was called by God uh, immediately to go into a land that he will tell him in an un unknown place for him but it was that immediate obedience unto God that allowed him to say I know I was messed up I know that things are not where it should be I may not be perfect but God I'm gonna follow you but what I do believe is this is that when you give your heart to Christ and when you really love him and when you really accept him as your savior, there's some new information that God will give you uh, privilege to. There is some things that on the other side of God and not being united with him that you don't have any um, privilege to understand. There's a new set of values, a new set of morals that comes into our life when we accept Jesus Christ as our savior and when we unite fully with him and so those things uh, those values going to take some getting used to they're going to be totally opposite from where you were before they're going to be some things out there that is going to totally blow your mind and you're going to be so comfortable at one point doing that when you give your heart and really unite with christ you'll find that it, it will get difficult it will get hard for you but I promise you, if you stick in there and you stay there, God promises a great ending for you. And so today I want to talk about just simply about how we endure, 
how we go through trials, how we make it through that storm of life. Let's go before God in prayer this morning. Father, we thank you right now for this great moment of opportunity that we've come and gathered from all around the world, online and through television. God, that you've gathered us here today. And I'm so thankful for the opportunity just to share with your people. So God, be with us during this hour, during this time, in Jesus' name, amen. And so I wanna talk about how we overcome, how we endure, because truly being connected with Christ, it gives us fortitude, it gives us tenacity, it gives us the ability and the endurance to overcome trials and tribulations. We triumph over trials. We make it through that situation. We don't allow it to get us down because we know that greater is he that's within us than he that's within the world, that we're more than just conquerors. We are greater than just what we just went through. We are better than what's behind us. And so I wanna encourage you to continue to move forward in life, in life. And so I wanna share with you a passage of scripture that really touched my spirit um, during this time of study and just preparing for um, this opportunity to come share with you today. And wherever you are, um, wherever you are um, in El Paso, around the country, I just want to ask that you turn with me to Romans 8, a, a, a real familiar passage of scripture, Romans the 8th chapter, and I'm going to go around verse 31. I'm going to read a few verses. I'm going to kind of bounce around a little bit, share some things with you, maybe some life stories, and um, just, just share with you on the day. I just want to spend a few moments with you uh, and sharing from this perspective. Um, when I look at Romans 31, what probably one of the first things that kind of just come out at me when I look at my Bible is simply um, that more than conqueror word. It's just right there. I mean, right there. As soon as I look at it, it says, I'm a winner. Right there, before I even begin to read, it says, you are a winner. You're more than your situation. You're better than what you, what, maybe what had just devastated you. You're better than just uh, the circumstance you're in right now. And what I like about serving God, just, just, just what, what I love about God is that we are winners before we start. It's not like a game. I know we're in the NBA playoffs right now and you're rooting for your team to win and um, whoever get through this round, they'll make it to the finals and uh, after those seven games or so, somebody will be presented with the trophy and it says that you are this year's winner, you are the NBA champion, that you have beaten everyone else around you and you are the champion. But what we don't realize is that that, that, that team, whoever wins, may not be the champion next year. They may not was the champion last year, but this year they won. But what I love about serving God is that we are always champions, that we win before we get the trophy. Yes, somebody here may give you an award, but our reward is in heaven, that we win, that we, we are champions, that we are champions before the fight begin. That's how we have to look at everything that we go through, that we are victorious, not victims, even before we endure the problem. In other words, you can go ahead and celebrate right now. You can celebrate why you're going through. You can go ahead and give God the praise and the glory why you are facing that issue, why you're going through that trial, why you are preparing or even in that situation, sickness, disease, whatever. Go ahead and celebrate now because you win. You win regardless because the Bible says that it's going to work out for your good. It's going to turn out good. So why not act like it right now? Act as if it's already good. And so in verse 31 right there, it says, what then shall we say in response to these things? And we're going to talk about what those things are in a second. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also along with him? In other words, God going to do it with Jesus. It's going to be a collaborative. We got a tag team team. It's, it's, it's us, God, Jesus working together for our behalf. And so we like that along with him graciously give us all things. Simply this, to overcome the endless trials of life, we must first train our minds to think like victors. We must at that moment train our minds and really to overcome the trials 
the endless trials. In other words, they'll never go away. You always going to have something you're in, coming out of, or going in. So why not look at it up front like, you know, God, I'm already going to develop a mindset that says I've already trained my mind. I've already woke up this morning and said, let this mind be in me, which is also in Christ Jesus. I've already trained my mind to endure the hardship. You know, I mean, get, I, I get up every morning and then I I go to the gym probably about 4, 4, 35 o'clock and, you know, sometimes that, that body feels sore and it just be aching and like, man, and, and, and the first thing your body tells you is to stay in bed and it give you every reason to stay there. It'll remind you of all the pain. It'll remind you of all the nausea. It'll remind you of all the things that should keep you there. But when your mind is made up, when you have determined in yourself already, because you know that tomorrow you may have went to bed late, you may have had a, a day on yesterday, but when you if you go to bed and you've already changed your mind that tomorrow I'm going to do what's best for me. I'm, I'm, I'm already preparing myself because I know my body will give me every excuse not to endure the day, not to go forward. But you got to train your mind to overcome this body because you know that greater is he if God be for us it's more than the world against us. God is already going before us making intercessor. He's already going before us and making us conquerors. When you look at that word more than conquerors, simply what it means, it's, a, it's an analogy or a metaphor of a king or a conqueror or a person that just went to war and he's bringing back all the king crowns or the, or the heads of the enemies that he just defeated. And he's holding them in his hand and there's somebody riding in a chariot with him that's always whispering in his ear, hey, you know that there's another battle ahead. In other words, the trial that you just, or the battle you just conquered, there is another one before you. But I want to remind you in your ear, that's what that spirit is saying, that I've already went before you and laid down the enemies that's already um, before you. All the traps that have been preset before you have already been conquered so you can walk through that thing the endless trials of life being victorious you know and and, and i like that verse in verse 31 it says what then shall we say in response to these things see it, it really doesn't matter what happens in your life it really doesn't matter what you endure what really matters is how you respond to it it's how you respond to these things. What do you call your trial? You know, what, what name have you given it? Paul begins with the question, what then shall we say in response to these things? You know, how we respond, you know, you have a, I don't know if, if you have been in a relationship or, you know, or you have someone that you're close to and you ask them a question or um, you say something to them, uh, probably how you will react or uh, feel as if they understand you or have heard what you said um, or you effectively communicated with them will determine will be determined by their response to you. In other words, you were always looking for a response to something. When we do something, we say something. If your child does something great, they're looking back, they're looking around, and they want to know, hey, what's your response? How are you going to respond to what just happened? And the Bible says the same thing. What then shall we say in response to these things? You know, your trials, what do you call your trials? What do you say in response to these things? Because your trials can claim you. Your trials can claim, it can claim everything. It can claim your dignity. Your trials can come and claim your self-respect, your self-esteem. Your trials are coming to claim you. It's trying to take away your victory status. Your trials are coming deliberately to rip away your mindset of being victorious. Your trials are coming to claim your joy, your peace, your comfort. Your trials are coming to claim those. But when you say how you respond to that thing will determine how 
it responds to you because I'm trying to make my, my trials. Hey, you can't have me. You can't have the joy that God has given me because your trials are coming to claim you, but your trials cannot condemn you. That's why it says if God before you, it's more than anything against you. That's the comfort of being united with Christ. It's really comforting to know that Christ is and God is on your side, that God would never leave you or forsake you. Man, that's comfort for me. I don't know about you, but I get joy thinking about how good God is and how he's already went before me, that he's before me. I placed him before my situations. I place them before my day. That's why prayer, I was even talked about last week, how important prayer is. Prayer is so important in our lives because before we encounter, you know, I always mess with people. I say, before we get up and pray to God, many of us will check our Facebook status. We'll check our email. We'll respond to text messages. And, and sometimes in that message is an issue that was deliberately sent to get you off track today. It was the email was perfect. It was the the the, the words or the, the phrases that you didn't want to hear. But before you even prayed, you heard all the bad news. You know, scroll through Facebook and heard all of the gossip and all of the, the craziness before you even placed God before you. That's why many of us, our, our trials claim us and end up condemning us. But when we place God before us, you know, before I even read or look at my Facebook, check an email. I mean, even if I, as a pastor, I get messages all night long. And sometimes I hear my phone ring or I hear a message come through. But before I answer, I just say right there in my spirit, God, you know, whatever this is, whatever the concern is, I want you to handle. I need you to go before me. I, matter of fact, God, before I even answer, respond to this thing, I need for you to impart wisdom in my mind. I need for you to give me the words to say, because if I say it in my own carnality, in my own self, I may mess it up, but I need for you to be for me. I need for you to go before me, my conversations, before my response to this thing, this status or whatever. I need for you to go before me because I refuse refuse to let the issues of, a, of life condemn me. You don't have to let your trials condemn you because they can't because God is on your side. You're united with Christ. You're one with him and him and God is working on your behalf. You can claim that right now. You can shout in victory. You can dance before the party starts because you know that God is for you and don't let your trials control you. You know, you ever met somebody where you can tell they're going through? Where you can tell that their that problem got them down? You know, yeah, sometimes the problems can be overwhelming. Yes, I'm not saying that you'll never show or express that 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 heartache or that feeling that you feel. No. That's not the case. I'm not saying you to, that your face would never express or your heart would never hurt or you won't ever frown or make that face that says, "Man, something's wrong." but you don't have to allow it to control you. You have control because that trial, like I say, is wanna claim you, but it's also bringing in doubt, fear. And that's why the Bible says that, you know, God has not given us that spirit, the spirit of fear, but of love, joy, peace, and of sound mind. The other word for sound mind is simply self-control. We don't have to allow anything that will cause us to doubt, cause us to fear, to really control us. God has given us the ability to control our situations or to allow him to control. That's pretty much a, a, a being in subjection to God and being really united. And our prayers also says that, God, I acknowledge my helplessness. And for you to come in and, uh, uh, to accomplish this task or to allow this thing to come through and work properly and to do exactly what you want this to, uh, to to do exactly what you need to do and for this to come out the way it's supposed to we can look at things and allow not allow our trials to control us yet in all these things the bible says what we're more than conquerors we don't have to allow this thing to claim us we don't have to allow our trials to condemn us we don't have to allow our trials to control us because yet in all of these things, we are more than conquerors. Like from day one, when we face a situation, all these and those things 
we are more than conquerors. Notice the connection. Paul says, look at this in verse 31, that we need to respond to the things he covered throughout Romans 8. Because he says that we need to respond to these things because he's already covered it for us. But I like this verse right here in verse 35. This is what really, really, uh, I believe, sums it up. Because our trials, when it wants to come in and claim us, when it wants to come in and condemn us, when it tries to come and control us, what it really is trying to do is separate us. It's trying to allow us to think so much about what it is that we take our mind off of who God is. You know, I've heard somebody say, you know, you need to tell that big problem how big your God is. And I promise it'll turn out small because all of the trials of life. And that's why I say we must we must dance in victory even before we get through because we hold the crown. We hold the trophy up front because our trials, all of our situations are geared to separate us from God. It wants to take us out of covenant. It wants to disconnect us from God. It wants to take us out of fellowship. It wants us to question our ability to stay connected and united in Christ. It wants to say, you're no longer a child of God. Look at what you're going through. Look at the trial. You're not saved. You're not a Christian. You're not this. It makes us question those things because a lot of times we are tie, we tie our trials based upon our relationship, but it doesn't have anything to do with one another. You will endure in order, to, in order to understand the power that resurrected Jesus Christ from the dead. You must understand his sufferings. So it's a connection. It's not either or. You can't base your trials, your conflict based upon your relationship with God because there will be trials. There will be troubles. But the verse 35 in Romans 8 it says this, who shall separate, separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine? You know, you're going without or nakedness or danger or sword. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. We can't, what will separate us? Who is what the question asks. Who shall separate us? I would not, I wouldn't allow my trial to. But who usually do is you, us. We allow ourselves, our circumstance to separate us from God. And I want to encourage you this morning that no matter how difficult it gets, no matter how hard it seems, that you maintain your connectivity. That's from week one. That's from the basis of just staying connected with Christ at all times, never leaving that fellowship because what happens is that the enemy wants us to lose that fellowship with Jesus, to question whether or not God is with us, to, to say to that thing, you know, how we respond, will we give it a name? Will we give it a name greater than the God we're serving? No. We will say to that issue that no, you can't have my joy. No, you can't have my peace. No, you can't have all those things that I know that God has promised me because I realize that God will complete the work he started in me. That's a promise that God has for you. That's a, that's a guarantee that God has for you that he will complete what he started in you. So you might as well finish it. You might as well jump up right now in victory wherever you are right now. You may be going through something. So you ought to give God a praise word you are in advance for what he's about to bring you through. He want to see your response. How will you respond to what you're about to go through? What? How will, how will you respond to what you're in right now? How will you respond once you get out of it? You know, you know, it's in the Bible when God, when Jesus came and he healed people, he touched them. He told them that don't, don't, don't do nothing. Don't say nothing. But I really do believe in my mind. He was looking for their response. He want to see how they act when God moves in their life. He want to see how they respond. God is always looking for our response. So how will you respond today to your trial? You a victor, not a victim. How will you look at your trial? What would you say? Would you let it separate you? Will you, will you let it claim you? Would you let it condemn you? Or will you let it control you? No, it has no power over you. Why? Because you're more than that problem. You're more than a conqueror. That word translated simply, you are super conqueror. You are a conqueror before you conquered. 
you are a conqueror before you're faced. So if God be for you, know that he'll handle every situation. And I want to encourage you this morning that if you don't have him on your side, if you don't have him living and dwelling in with you, in, 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 dwelling in and with you, that I don't leave this broadcast today without sharing him with you. He gave him himself for all of us. He paid the ultimate price for you and I. And I, I will be remiss to not share Jesus Christ with you. He belongs to us. and He wants to be a part of your life. He wants to unite with you. So if you could say these simple words with me today. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. Forgive me of every sin. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart. You died for my sins and you rose with all power in your hands. Fill me with your spirit. Dwell in me. Live in me from this day and forever. Amen. God bless you. If you said that prayer, God entered your life. All your trials or trouble. You now have somebody fighting on your behalf, going before you, making preparations for your next victory. I want to encourage you today, if you don't have a church home or you um, looking for a place to worship, you can always visit us online. You can visit our church, Rock Face Center. Um, we have a website, rockfacecenter.com. You can watch our service live. We have Sunday services, 9 a.m., 11 a.m. Service even tonight, Wednesday night, 7 p.m. And I encourage you to get God, have him first and foremost in your life, and stay connected with him. Because whatever you face, God has the power to bring you through. I thank God for the opportunity, and I thank God for sharing with each and every one of you today. God bless you. And as we move forward from this broadcast, I ask that whatever you do, there's a prayer line there. There's a way that you can connect with us here at the station. Um, people are ready to pray with you at any given moment. I bid you greetings today. God bless you. Have an awesome, wonderful day. And remember, you are more than a conqueror. Face that problem victorious attitude. God bless you. Thank you for watching United with Christ. We pray this has been a blessing to you and we invite you to tune in again tomorrow. We invite your comments, questions, or prayer requests. You may contact us at KSE Christian Television, 2201 East Wyoming Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79903. Or call us at 915-532-8588 during regular business hours. Or you can visct our website at www.kscd.com. God bless you.